Hey everybody, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. So yeah, it's been forever since I last updated this, and uh, I am sorry about that, but in the interest of posterity, I'm not really going to talk about things. There's, I'll get into it a little bit next episode, but for now, let's just go ahead and talk about some Realms books, what do you say? I'm going to look at two books today. Uh, that's the plan, anyway. This might be very short. I haven't recorded in so long. I don't know how this is going to go. Down Shadow by Eric Scott DeBee. And, you know, I, I was thinking today, even if DeBee is the wrong way to pronounce that, if it's Dubai or something like that, just pretend that I'm saying D, D-E space B period, and that way DeBee, it's correct. See, so even if it's wrong, it's right. So Down Shadow is a really... I, you know, I, I know I say this a lot, but it's a really strange book. Debbie has all these really cool ideas of how to reimagine things in the realms, and I like that. I didn't really overall enjoy the book, but I felt like it had a lot of promise, and this gets some sequels, so I'm really curious to read those. And one of these sequels, either two or three, I can't remember how many there are, but one of them at least was an ebook only, and uh, I, I'd, I'd love to see how that did and uh, if people uh, read it as much as anything else, I, I, I think it is, it's, it's tough to measure when you're, when you're looking at a sequel that's an ebook only, because generally sequels sell less better unless it's, you know, some sort of runaway hit like um, uh, Wheel of Time or something. But in general, uh, you know, if, if you're ever looking for a trilogy and book three on Amazon is like $80 because it's out of print now, that's why it is. Uh, bookstores will, you know, I mean, I guess the models change now, right? But but in the old days, bookstores would order a lot of book one, about half as much as book two for book two, and then about half as much for book three. And so book three would be the rarest because people would try the first one and then not everybody would like it, right? So in any case, I'll, I'll be interested to see how that goes. The, the first one is this mix of Batman with a little bit of Joker thrown in, uh, old school Joker, and anime, harem comedies. Like, what a weird <laughs> combination, right? It doesn't seem to make any sense. And, I don't know, Debbie almost pulls it off. Almost. There was a point where I was really digging it, but it... Uh, there were some things... Now, keep in mind, it's been over a year since I read it, so I might be getting some details really wrong. But what I remember is... Our main character, our decently main character, this is fairly, uh, it's got a lot of different characters with things going on. Our fairly main character is uh, the Shadowbane uh, character, who is a paladin who stalks the knight, uh, I believe, I believe he's in the dungeon, uh, the same one, the Undermountain dungeon, that's where he hangs out in the upper floors, but maybe I'm misremembering that, I guess I'll find out when I get to part two. Um, and by day, he's a cop, and there's this thing about him where he can't feel pain. He doesn't have, like, his, his nerves were burnt out, which is, again, old-school Joker. I think that's what they did for the movie with Jack Nicholson, if I remember correctly. I remember that being a deal when I was a kid, anyway. It might, I'm sure it's in the comics somewhere. The Joker's gone through so many different iterations at this point. So in any case, Shadowbane is a uh, cop by day and Batman by night. And then he kind of gets tangled up in this plot that involves a lot of women with different crazy colors of hair and some sort of plot. And I remember at one point there's like a lot to do about people nervous about who asks them to a dance. <laughs> and it was like holy shit, this is really, like, like this is weird, man. And then I, I think I liked mostly the first half, and then it just kind of got tangled up in its own plot, if you will. Like, it, it, it got uh, to the point where I couldn't really follow... All right, I guess I just... There were so many characters that I didn't care, or whatever. Um, in any case, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious to read more about it. And, you know, I, it, 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 like most of Debbie's stuff, I was like, I almost like this. Just almost. Not quite, but almost. And I, I, it's frustrating that his first book was the one that I liked the most, because I, I, felt about, I felt about it the same way, that I almost really liked it. And then as they go along, I feel kind of less and less connected. But whatever, it's it's still it's still fun and um, kind of seeing a, a different take on a paladin, if you will. That was that was nice, and I look forward to seeing where the character goes from there. 
The next one we'll talk about is Venom in Her Veins by Tim Pratt. I gotta admit, I was so nervous about reading this one because I, I didn't think it looked very interesting. I, I just, uh, at the time that it first came out, I know that Tim Pratt, I, I don't think, done any other fantasy. And I was like, oh, the stuff that he's done just doesn't look like it's going to mesh well. And this is just, it's not going to... It's not going to really embrace the realms. And, oh, man, was I wrong. And I'm so glad to be wrong here. This book was just so much fun. It was just seriously, like, one of the most fun and engaging books I've ever read. At the end of the day, it's essentially a dungeon uh, delve. And that's not really my thing. But, God, I enjoyed it. you got a main character who's part of, like, a traveling circus troupe, I, th I think it is. I again, it's been over a year <laughs> since I've read these, so I'm probably going to get some details wrong. Uh, but, you know, I our main character is this young uh, girl, and, and there's something about snakes in her past, and I can't even, I can't even remember. I might, I, it, probably if I tried to remember, I'm going to get it mixed up with House of Serpents somehow. But in any case, somebody from there gets, like, kidnapped and taken down into the Underdark or whatever, and the rest of the troop uh, uh, and, and, and some other people as well, I believe, like maybe a mercenary group or something, they all go into the Underdark to try to save these people. And it becomes, uh, you know, essentially a dungeon dive uh, with uh, uh, trying to rescue people. And then there's the added layer of her, the main character's history, her backstory, all the snake stuff and everything going on there. And there's a lot of, like, moral gray areas, and I really like that. It, it just just a really fun book. And, in fact, I enjoyed this book so much that I sought out other stuff from Tim Pratt. And I read one of his non-fantasy books, so it's kind of fantasy. It's, 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 it's like, about as fantasy as, like, uh, Clive Barker's Weave World. And, in fact, I think it's got a name, like, Briar World or Briar Patch or... Not Patchworld, a friend of mine wrote that book, but um, it's it's something like that. And uh, I just, I really couldn't get into it. And then I saw that he wrote for Pathfinder. Uh, he's got two series going on under Pathfinder, and I read, I think it's called City of the Fallen Sky or something like that. And I guess in Pathfinder they have their own version of Netheril, and I was like, oh, interesting. It really doesn't have anything to do with Netheril, but the main character is an alchemist, and it's super fun, too. And his other series, which I think starts with Liar's Blade, uh, that looks awesome as well. And I think I actually bought the first book of that, and I'll probably get around to reading it at some point. I am also kind of reading through Pathfinder and Warhammer, as I've probably mentioned. Uh, you can follow me on Goodreads, uh, gordoncole at gmail.com. And for all of those of you who don't get that reference, maybe soon you will, because Twin Peaks is coming back, so yay. In any case... Uh, Tim Pratt really, really gets it and obviously just really has a great time while he's writing. I, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that. I guess, you know, I guess that's the trick of writing, right? Like, it's um, uh, when it's really good, sometimes it takes a long time and, it, and it, 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 takes, it takes a lot of effort to make it feel so effortless. In any case, I, I really, really enjoyed Venom in Her Veins. I guess that title implies the snake stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah, both of those I, I dug. Um, this went by so fast that I guess I'll just very quickly mention uh, one more. That's Prophet of the Dead. It's by Richard Lee Byers. Uh, that rounds out the Brotherhood of the Griffin storyline. And it seemed like it was self-contained, so I started reading it, but it just didn't... I, I mean, I, I think at this point I, I was just so kind of distanced from the series as a whole, that I just um, I just gave up on it pretty quickly. Really frustrating, because I so enjoyed the Haunted Lands trilogy. I think it's just that the that Brotherhood of the Griffin first three-parter, or whatever it was, was so drawn out, I, and, and I just felt like nothing interesting was done with the characters, and so I just got to a point where I was like, I, I just, I hate these characters now. And I think, I again, it's been so long, but I think... The one character I kind of liked might have like taken a leave of absence at this point, so yeah, I just uh, I, I just I couldn't get into it. But I'm assuming if you if you had enjoyed the Brotherhood of the Griffin stuff up to this point, then you're gonna love this one as well. Uh, for me, it just didn't work. Yeah, so 
you know, uh, since this is so short, I'll just go ahead and say that, like, I, ke- I keep putting these off because I keep thinking, um, A, I, I know I've only got two episodes worth, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should wait till I've got five episodes worth, but then I don't want to read more because I'm like, oh, if I read more, I'm going to completely forget what I had to say about the first two episodes worth of books. You, you know, it's just this vicious cycle over and over and over again. So I was like, finally, just today, I'm like, what the hell? I just got to record something. Even if it's short, and even if it doesn't really say a hell of a lot, I just got to get it down. So I did. Huzzah. I'm sure you're all proud of me. And I, th- I think at this point, because we're uh, so deep into fourth edition and we're so close to the end, I mean, I honestly, at this point, it could be the end of Realms Fiction that's out there. Um, Salvatore's put out Hero, and I, there might be one more coming from Greenwood. I'm, I'm not sure, but essentially everything's... At a standstill now, and who knows if it's going to start up again. I, um, I mean, if if the landscape doesn't afford it now, then I don't know if it's going to afford it any time in the future. I find it so crazy that at least Salvatore doesn't have more of a contract with Wizards because, you know, I, I I'm I don't give a shit, but his stuff obviously resonates with a lot of people, and um, like I'm I'm part of the. Facebook group Forgotten Realms Archives, and, uh, you know, just over and over and over again, people post about how much they love Bob and, and his work, and uh, tons of people are like, Hero was amazing, is this it? So, like, it's, I mean, I don't know, I, I, I guess, when you look at it, I've maybe seen a hundred people talk about it and how much they love it. For all I know, that hundred people, that's every sale that it's made, right? Like, I, it's all anecdotal evidence, but it seems as if it's uh, super popular, and I'm shocked that Wizards doesn't keep selling it, because I would think they would make money off of at least Salvatore's work. But uh, their company, their decision. Uh, so I figured, what the hell? You know, even even if it takes all year to get through the rest, or, or longer, good chance to catch up here, right? So I'll see you on the next episode a little more about what, uh, why I, I stopped so abruptly there. Yeah, and, and then I'll just, I'll just post these kind of as I get them done. And I'll do the same from here on out, rather than doing blocks of five. Okay, for now, this is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered.